Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. It's a special day here at TV44 because I have Dr. Trudy Pieper here with us. So happy to have you joining us today. It's always a pleasure to be here, Jennifer. We have an exciting story uh, show coming up for you, but you know many of you have been hearing about Dr. Trudy's book for the past six weeks, and many of you now own a copy of this. Well, guess what? We've got 30 minutes to glean more wonderful knowledge from this gifted doctor, and again, so glad to have you here. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, coming up today on our show, um, we're gonna focus on many different topics, cancer prevention tips, life expectancy, the mind diet, protein, plus how to make your own botanical bug spray. We also have part two of Matt Finkel's series on summer swimming. So we'll add a little exercise focus into our show as well. But first, today's scripture verse, which comes to us from Proverbs chapter three, verses one and two. Trudy, would you mind reading it? My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. That is a great verse for us to remember as we uh, think about life expectancy. We think about how God does number our days, and that is what we're going to talk about first in our news of the day, health news of the day, life expectancy. Recently, there was a, a study released that uh, shows who lives the longest across the, around the world. That's right. It's amazing that the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, 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 <laughs> every year puts out um, a list of where people live the longest. I, I'm sure that helps their work. But what it was, it's very interesting. I found that there are many uh, countries, uh, and unfortunately, the United States not is not even in the top ten. We're in the mm. top fifty of where people live the longest, and the the list uh, starts with Monaco. And Monaco lives uh, at an average of 80, almost 90 years. Mm -hmm. And then comes Macau, which is 84 years. Um, Japan at 84.46. Singapore at 84.38. And the, it, the, the list goes on. So that the top 10, four are Asian and three are Mediterranean. Four Asian, three are Mediterranean. What, what are the components in those diets that potentially are helping them be at the top of the uh, life expectancy in our, in our world? And I think you could hit the, head, uh, the nail on the head there, it is diet. I think that's the main difference of why these countries, when you think about four Asian, three Mediterranean. With the Asian diet, it involves, they eat a lot more vegetables, they're eating more seafood, and they drink more green tea than we mm. do. I've heard you talk about that green tea it's, over and over and over it's again. It's amazing with antioxidants and how that really helps you have better health. And as far as the Mediterranean, we all have heard of the Mediterranean diet. Well, basically that's uh, protein that they use as fish. So their main f source of protein is fish. They have a lot of good fats of olives and olive oil in their diet. Mm. And with those, their diet uh, definitely helps them to live longer. Wow. Now, the United States did come in at number 42 out of about 180. So there's definitely a lot more underneath it. But I would imagine here in the United States, we have, we have a ways to go with some of our diets. We do. And another thing, there's a cultural aspect. In, in the Asian countries, they actually encourage, it's a part of their lifestyle to do morning exercise. And also, obesity is something that is not encouraged and is really frowned upon in Asian wow. culture. So it has to do a cultural thing also, I think. That's interesting, very interesting. So the top 10 life expectancy all across the country, around the world, we're looking at several uh, Asian and several Mediterranean countries. Very interesting, the United States coming in number 42. Later today, we're gonna talk more about diet, but next we're shifting to the subject of cancer. Well, for the past month, you've been hearing us talk a lot about this book, Prevention is the Cure for Cancer, Five Easy Steps. And judging by your response to our offer here at TV44, we know this is a topic that is important and timely. Well, what an honor it is to have Dr. Trudy, the author of the book, here with us today. So we're going to take the next few minutes talking a little bit more about this book, which many of you have possibly in your living rooms. We're going to take a deeper look at it, and we're going to start out by talking about the book itself. Now, of course, um, there's so many health topics that exist, and this particular book is about cancer. Trudy, let's just talk about the beginning. You could have, you could have written on all kinds of subjects. There's so many health things to discuss. Why, why pick cancer? As a naturopathic doctor, I'm really concerned about the number of people that are getting cancer. 
each year we see more and more, and even though billions of dollars are spent on treatment, we still are seeing more people who are coming in with cancer. It's growing in such a way that the United States is ranked sixth highest in mm. countries. And with all the advances we've made in our medical community, we still do not seem to be able to stop the cancer. Mm. Statistics show that one out of every three people will have cancer within their lifetime. Wow. It's a huge problem that continues to grow. Now, um, one out of every three people, that would cause some to say it's inevitable. It's just going to happen. It's part of my genes. There's no chance to get out of it. But your book and your teachings and your, your training suggest potentially otherwise. It, that's not true. Um, you're so right. It is not inherited. The, actually, the World Health Organization indicates that 90% of all cancers are lifestyle choices. choices. Mm. The American Cancer Society clearly states that between 5 and 10% of all cancers are inherited. And what that means, Jennifer, is that you don't inherit the cancer. You inherit a mutated gene in your body with the potential mm. for cancer. It does not mean that you will get cancer. It just means that your body has a tendency toward that. There's only 5 to 10% of all <laughs> cancers. So we really do have control and can make choices that will prevent us from having cancer. So one of the things, key thing you've got right here calling prevention yes. is the cure for cancer. So obviously this is something that starts ahead of time. We want to work to live our lives in a way. We know that many people have been diagnosed with cancer, and that's a separate issue, and that's, that's got to be dealt with. But right. to prevent it, there are specific lifestyle changes that we can make to right. help us get there. Yes, and it's important to realize, and as the book puts out, I try to make it a really easy read. Um, it's only 100 pages. Oh, I think it is, yeah. And I it moves you right well through and helps you understand what causes cancer. And if you understand why you get cancer or how it happens, it makes it easier to prevent. And there's two reasons you get cancer. One is that your immune system is not functioning at its level, and immune system is always built by good choices of food. Mm. And the second is that you have free radical damage. So if you put those two together, that equals cancer. So there are lots of things that we can do, but just making some healthy choices that will uh, help our bodies. Five things here that you mentioned, allow time for rest and relaxation, avoid environmental toxins, build your immune system, do not worry, and exercise. Those are starting points. Those yes. are key things that um, people will, will look into. I love the fact that you've got five key points in here, which we could spend probably the next couple hours talking about. But something else that I think is very practical is you have 30 tips, 30 tips. And let's talk about, we've got 10 of those that we could focus on quickly. Yes. Um, just simple daily changes. I, I want to make it easy so everyone can understand that there's something everybody can do. And in the book, there are actually 30 tips, one for every day. So if you do one of these every day of your life, you are going to help prevent cancer. And they're all easy things. The first one is 10 almonds. Eat 10 almonds every day. They have anti-cancer properties, and they're great essential fatty mm. acids. The next one is garlic. Put some zest into your food. Uh, research shows that it, that it will prevent cancers of the digestive system. Hmm. And here's my favorite, green tea. <laughs> Three glasses of green tea every day inhibits cancer cell growth because of the antioxidants that are in them. Hmm. Smile until your face hurts. <laughs> We forget about how easy it is to smile, but endor uh, smiling makes endorphins, and endorphins boost the immune system to create more T and B cells, which are white blood wow. cells, wow. and will are natural uh, cancer killers in your body. <laughs> tomatoes, it's garden season. You've got your plants yes. out there. Haul those tomatoes in, slice them up, and eat them. They contain lycopene, mm. and lycopene uh, cuts the risk of cervical, lung, stomach, and prostate cancers. Prayer warrior, here's the one we all love. Uh, we know we need to pray, this is a reason to pray more. Mm. Praying creates a state of serenity that actually slows cancer growth. Wow. So if there are cancer wow. cells growing in your body, and we all have them, then it will slow that growth just by being in that state of, of in communing with God. Wow. And that's, uh, research shows that. <laughs> and then tart cherries, um, again, a good time of year to pick those cherries and eat them. They're loaded with anthocyanins, which will stop cancers. And here's another one that people um, have a hard time with. It's my white foods. Take a break from white foods. Uh, they cause inflammation. When, what, what do you mean by white foods? White foods are flour, 
white flour, white sugar, white potatoes, and white rice. <laughs> and the inflammatory uh, causes uh, more free radical damage in your body. Wow. And our final one, and again, because of summer, a good tip is when you're out there grilling your meat, not to let it get burned or charred because it contains chemicals that causes the DNA uh, to change and increases the chance of cancer. Wow, so that's just 10 of the 30 daily suggestions that Dr. Trudy has in this book. Well, due to its popularity for the many of you that have been um, writing into us saying that you're really interested in it, we are extending our summer thank you offer through the month of July. For any donation to TV44, $100 or more, we will send you a copy of Dr. Trudy's book. Simply mention your interest in receiving the book at the time of your donation. Well, from cancer to bugs, I'm not sure what it's like where you live, but with the heavy rains in June, mosquitoes and other bugs have definitely made their appearance in recent weeks. However, if you're using the typical store-bought bug sprays, then you're coating your skin with harsh chemicals that studies show could actually impair brain function and create other health-related problems. In today's Lost Creek Care Center food and health segment, we have a botanical safe alternative today that Dr. Trudy recommends, and she is going to show us how to make it. Thanks, Zach. Uh, today we're going to make a tincture of um, catnip in vinegar base. So to get that started, I'm going to show you this is catnip. And we can smell it already mm -hmm. on this side. Mm -hmm. And see how tall that is? Usually they grow to be two to three feet tall. Really? Uh, once you plant them in the garden, they're very prolific. They just almost take the garden over. It's uh. from the mint family. Hmm. And cats love them. My yeah. cats hang out in my garden <laughs> all the time. And so to make this bug spray, I'm going to have you each put you to work here. Okay. All you have to do is peel these leaves off. We want fresh leaves. Okay. And I've, I've got a start of them here, as you can see. So we're going to peel those off. Now, what are some of the, the natural benefits to catnip for humans? Uh, doesn't it have quite a few? It, it does. Um, it's probably my go-to for children. I like uh, to use it for, it calms the nerves and relaxes. And if oh. a child has mm. diarrhea, it's probably the best thing you can possibly give them hmm. to help wow. a child's diarrhea. It's very mild and passive. It also uh, is traditionally used for cold and flus. Oh. So if you have a, a, a cold or you're feeling sick, or you think you come on the flu symptoms, uh, taking some catnip will definitely help with, with those symptoms. It's great for, for reducing fevers. Um, wow. So if you have a fever or your child has a fever, um, it helps to relax them and allow the, the fever to pass. It's antispasmodic, which uh, will help with stomach upsets, gas, and colic. Oh, goodness. So it has a, a lot, lot, of, on. lot of uses. One, one plant that you can plant and will just it does all keep those producing things. and all these things for Every you. year. And, and again, it smells wonderful. It is part of the mint family. It does smell very nice. Mm -hmm. It does. It's very pungent if you were here sit with us in the set, you would definitely, definitely <laughs> be able to smell it. Okay, good job. Now, I know everyone is envious. You have scissor envy here. Yes, These I These I... are, are my herb scissors. I never heard of such a thing. And um, regular scissors will work. But what we want you to do now is to take and start cutting up because we were going to release Ooh. the oils. Mm. And so mm. if you'll each do that. I we just want to. I, I get to use the herb scissors. The herb scissors. scissors. You and you're cut. saying you can find these oh online somewhere. Oh my goodness, somewhere. you can, can smell this even more as we as, do this. It opens up and releases those essential oils right out from the leaves. Hmm. And so you chop those up with the goal. Eventually you can start putting them in the a cup there, Zach. Sure. We need two okay. cups full that okay. we're going to put into our jar to make our uh, bug spray. And once we get those in there, the, uh, the next thing will be we adding some natural rice vinegar on top of that. Okay. It's a really simple recipe. Put a lid on it. Um, I use dark mason jars because we don't want oxidation, but mm. you can use a clear one and just keep it in a cupboard. Okay. And the important mm. thing is then for two weeks you allow those oils to be drawn out from the natural rice vinegar and you have to shake it every day. Okay, and for how the, long? Just uh, a little just, bit? Just a little bit. For Whenever two or three I, hours? Yeah, you just stand there <laughs> nonstop kind of like and making and butter. Shake it. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, really, once or twice a day, just okay. kind of give it the sh It's a good thing for kids to do. Yeah. My grandkids yeah. come in and they know they have to shake my My, yeah, my girls would love to do these scissors. So, so you shake it up. Cut their fingers. And as soon as we get two cups full of that, we're ready to go with the next step. Close. Okay, we're really You're doing close. a great job there. I can smell it. You're right. It just keeps coming. <laughs> it does. Coming out. Lots and lots and lots. Okay, we're really okay. close. Let's okay, two cups. Okay. Now we're going to put that in that jar. Alrighty. Excellent. So it almost fills it. It'll go down as it goes. Next, 
natural rice vinegar. You can buy that any place, any grocery store carries okay. rice and how vinegar. Much we'll, we'll and it's going to be three cups. Three cups. Okay. And um, each one of these is a cup and a half. Okay. So by doing two of those, you should take care of it and it'll cover it up completely. You know, this takes a little bit of prep time, but really not a lot. It does. And if you just think about the health benefits on the well, other and end. Well, and the amount you're going to end up with, I think, will it's, probably it's last huge, quite, a, quite a while. It will. And you can use it for a while. And I guess with children is my biggest concern because we know that the harsh chemicals are more absorbable in the children's skin. Mm. And so they actually get more of the DEET into their system than adults wow. do. So for children, the biggest thing is you have to plan ahead that it takes two weeks. Yeah. You need to have this on yourself for two weeks, shaking it. And then after that, it'll be ready. The next thing is you just put a lid on it and shake it up and store. All right. And that was easy enough. That is easy enough. This could almost be an annual spring family That's activity. Right. I have a finished product for us to use so next. So this has been sitting for two this weeks? This is two weeks and we've been shaking it every day for two weeks. Okay. So this is the finished product and what we're going to do will be a little teamwork here. Um, you'll need to strain out, open it up, Zach, and then you're going to pour through. I have a strainer inside of this funnel oh, okay. and we're going to funnel it right into this um, this so container. We, we just a don't want easier. the leaf. We don't want the leaf. We do not want the leaf. You don't want the leaf now. I mean, it doesn't hurt to get in there, but the goal is because you're going to put in a spray bottle mm, and make sure. sure the leaf will clog things up. So you pour that through there, and at the end, you want to make sure you squeeze to make sure you get all the liquid out of the leaf. And then from there, we'll funnel it into a spray bottle. It smells a little bit different now yeah. <laughs> with the, the vinegar. And it on. looks the a little different too. The color. Mm hmm. Okay. okay, good job on that. All right. Wow, that almost filled that whole jar too. It did. So you have plenty of bug spray because yeah. wow. you know you're going to be spritzing this throughout. Mm -hmm. All right, then next we're going to do, we're going to dump one more time. It just makes it easier that when someone holds this okay. and you put it into your spray bottle. Okay, stop. Gonna go oh. over. It's gonna, it fills <laughs> up. I have two bottles, so oh. uh, I'll have to put the next. And we'll do the other one sure, later. Sure, we'll do that next. And there's your spray. Perfect. Put that on there. And now wow. you have bug spray. Homemade bug spray. And you know, I haven't yeah. seen a single bug yet in the studio, so it must be working. <laughs> must be working. Effectively. There we go. <laughs> there it is. All right. It's wonderful. Well, wow. it smells good. Dr. Trudy, thank you so much. My pleasure. Enjoy your summer now, bug free. <laughs> absolutely. Bug free, absolutely. Well, don't forget, you can rewatch this segment anytime online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. For more information or to get a copy of this recipe, email us at, at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Now, maybe you want to take your botanical bug spray to the pool this summer. Well, of course, this, or of course, the summer swimming is a great way to stay in shape. And last week marked the culmination of the 2015 competitive summer swim season in the area. Matt Finkel has a special story on a family who devotes a whole lot of volunteer time to the Ada Gators swim program. Matt. Thanks, Zach. Well, as we saw last week on Faith and Friends, summer swim teams are a great way for kids to stay active in June and July. With boys and girls ages 4 to 18 competing, it takes a lot of volunteers to make it all come together. Between practices and meets, the summer swim season would not exist without community involvement. This week's OIO Faith on the Field segment takes us to Ada, where the Spiker family and their four boys are an integral part of the Gators summer swim team. Karen Spiker has grown accustomed to spending her summer evenings at the pool. Our family, we all get to, everybody gets to swim and we all volunteer, so we get to enjoy and watch our kids while they, they're all on the same team. So it really makes a good time for summer evenings, that's for sure. And her boys feel right at home in the water. Pretty much an everyday thing, all, see, all year thing, every day. Swimming with my friends. It keeps me strong and that's why I have these babies right here. <laughs> Those big muscles wouldn't be possible without the hard work of mom and dad who along with other parent volunteers are the backbone of the program. Doing a lot of timing duties, getting volunteers for the swim meets and trying to find people, getting everybody involved and helping to do that. We, we have a pancake breakfast and we um, we get everybody involved and everybody brings stuff to that and we have just have a lot of a lot of fun at the swim meets and everybody works together. Well, Swimming is a great sport. It's really great exercise and they all love the pool so and uh, everybody out here on the Ada swim team are great people. 
And spikers are one of those families that you can really count on. You can see just by our swim meet, sometimes we call it organized chaos, and we really need to know where the kids are and where they need to be. Um, spikers have just stepped up and uh, helped us whenever we need it. This program wouldn't be anything without the parents. I mean, it's parent run, parent operated, everything. I mean, they're just a big help, big portion of the whole community, and it's really a great, great thing to see everyone come together. Rogan is just one of a handful of former team members who have moved on to coach and encourage younger swimmers. I started here when I was eight years old, so when the opportunity came, I figured it would be a great opportunity for me to become a coach. So. I help mainly the eight and unders swim, and then I line them up for all their events at the meets and stuff like that. So you always see lots of improvement from day to day, especially, and then the meets, they always do their best. I've swam when I was a kid, and I wanted my kids to swim, and they love the water. We have four different age kids, so instead of having four games at four different places, we can all come here to the pool, and you can, you can watch all four kids swim in the same evening. For my, our family and families like the Spikers, this is what summer's all about. Seeing the kids out here having a good time, getting some exercise. It's just great to be out here and, and, and to be out here in the summer with families and having a, we do have a good time. The summer swim season concluded on July 11th with the WOAL Championship Meet in Wapakoneta. Another successful season is in the books thanks to the hard work of the Spikers and many just like them. And seeing how much the kids enjoy competing in the pool, it's easy to see why the parents put in so much effort. Thank you, Matt. We're moving now into our second health news topic of the week, and we're going to talk about the MIND diet. Studies indicate the MIND diet improves cognitive function. Cognitive, of course, talking about your mind. So, Trudy, let's talk briefly about this diet and the study results that have been recently released. It's, it's newly re released and it is in the news, which is important for people to know that um, Alzheimer's is just something that's on everyone's worry. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to have Alzheimer's. 44 million people worldwide have Alzheimer's at this point. And studies mm -hmm. show that 5% of people over 65 have Alzheimer's. Yeah. The Rush University Medical Center in Chicago released a study that was a five-year study involving 1,000 seniors aged 58 to 98. And they wanted, they were measured for cognitive ability, your ability to remember and to think um, and, and how they can improve that. And they tested three diets, the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, and a new diet called the MIND, M-I-N-D diet. The results were really interesting in that the Mediterranean diet um, actually was just a little bit better at 54% of the people having a reduced risk. 53% showed a reduced risk on the MIND diet and the DASH diet, which is an, uh, a hypotensive diet for people who mm -hmm. have high blood pressure, uh, came in at only 39%. The, the point being at the bottom of this that it didn't matter of your age, your sex, your current weight, or your genetic factors, the most important factor was food and what your diet was. And if you would follow the MIND diet just slightly, you didn't have mm -hmm. to be compliant even uh, with just a little bit of adherence to the diet, people had a 7.5 year uh, increase in their cognitive ability. So they, a, a 70 year old would think really? more like a 63.2 age year old person. So let, let's look at some of these uh, food that, foods that um, would be considered part of the, the MIND diet. See green leafy vegetables, two servings a week, vegetables plus, or salad plus another vegetable. Something, yeah, a salad and at least one other vegetable every day, nuts to eat daily, um, almonds, hazelnuts, walnuts, berries was the only fruit recommended at least two times a week. That's kind of a, a low acidic or different? Low glycemic. Like low glycemic, okay. Mm -hmm. Low glycemic fruit. Um, whole grains, fish, poultry, olive oil, and red wine wrap it up. And again, uh, you, the adherence to that is most important. All the other diets you had to do it strictly to getting mm -hmm. a result, and these as long as you made an effort. And there were five food groups, Jennifer, that they told you not to include. And you should include red meat, margarine and butter, cheese, anything sweet, dessert, pastries and sweets, and fried foods. <laughs> There's probably a few people at home right now saying, ah, I really like those. Can I have those in moderation? <laughs> Well, to increase your cognitive abilities, you might be willing to forgo. And the nice thing about, if you can find more information about the MIND diet, it is uh, that the sweets you can have five times a week, but no more than that. All right. So it's not complete avoidance. Well, don't forget, you can always find Dr. Trudy Pieper at her, her uh, office in Johnstown, Ohio, at Phoenix Wellness, and the website is Phoenix Wellness 
four, the number four, you, you, phoenixwellness4u.com, correct? Right, .com. correct. And on my web website, I do have the, the Mind Diet. So if someone wants to go there and get the more information about that, it is available on my website. Great. Well, we're going to stay on the topic of food and talk about ways to improve the health of boomers, which will in turn work to prevent further health issues. While medical advances contribute to the increasing lifespan of the average American, proper nutrition is also a major factor in slowing the aging process. There were 76 million boomers born between 1946 and 1964 in the United States, and a diet that is dependent on easy to prepare, processed and refined foods often refers often offers little nutritional value. So Trudy, let's talk about this issue and the fact that protein is really something that older Americans are needing. Yes, and we're finding they're not getting en enough protein. The Journal of American College Nutrition recommends that those who are born in that period, the boomers, um, over 50 years of old age should have 0.45 grams of protein. So less than a half, you need half a gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you're 150 pounds, you need about 67 grams of protein a day in your body. And why do we need so much protein, particularly when we're seniors? Because of muscle mass. And when you lose muscle mass, it impacts the quality of your life. Uh, it, if you do not have enough lean muscle mass, you don't have good coordination. Your ability to get up from a standing position um, and mm -hmm. you're being more shaky and not be able to have that strength to be able to do that. More than 50% of women over 65, when they break a hip, they never walk again. And they think that's because of pre-existing muscle loss that they didn't have at the time that they broke their hip. Uh, chronic muscle loss affects 30% of people over age 50, over age 60, and 50% of the people over age 80 have chronic muscle loss. And the main cause of muscle loss is lack of protein in your diet. So what then would be ways that people can get protein? People hear the word protein and they just always think, oh, red meat. Right. Um, but that is not the only protein source. There are lots of other op options, right? Right, and meat is probably the best source, but it's very difficult, particularly for seniors, if they have chewing problems with their mm. teeth. Um, and it's very expensive sometimes if you're on a limited budget to actually get meat. So um, you need to first of all set a goal to know that you need to have that protein in your diet. And if you can do 20 grams per meal, and that's a goal. And you can start with eggs. Eggs mm. have six grams of protein per egg. Move on to some nut milk. There's almond milk, coconut milk, cashew milk, and drinking a you know, glass of that will give you 1.5 grams of protein every time you drink that. Bee pollen, which is denser than any other protein source, just add a tablespoon of bee pollen with every meal and you'll have four grams of protein at the end of the day. Mm. Protein powder, there's whey, there's brown rice, and pea protein, which are all you can add with one scoop, can add 20 grams of protein to wow. your meal. Stir that into your almond milk and, and for sure get additional protein. Mm -hmm. I would stay away from soy protein because of the uh, photo, phytoestrogens, mm -hmm. which can sometimes disrupt your hormones in your body. And then finally, there are vegetables that actually have protein. Good old beans, <laughs> which we love. Uh, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli are all sources of protein. So we're looking at a total amount of protein in a day, not necessarily sit down and eat a chunk of meat that'll do it. We're looking at multiple ways to make sure that it's continually getting into the body. Right. Um, each meal should have a protein source in it and for prevention. We know my book's about prevention. Well, right. we need to be preventative in making sure that we don't lose our, lose our muscle mass as we get older, and you have to start that now. You cannot wait until you're 50 to start or 65 or 70, it's too late. You need to start building muscle mass immediately. Wow, wonderful information. What a blessing it has been to have Dr. Trudy Pieper with us today on Faith and Friends. I'm sure you have been appreciating her health tips that we've been bringing you weeks and weeks and weeks, and you can always see them on our website as well. We want to say thank you to the many of you who are financial partners for us, because it is through your connection that we're able to bring you special health shows just like this one, bring Trudy's knowledge right here into the studio and bring it to you at home. We also want to remind you that Prevention is the Cure for Cancer is still being offered to you through the month of July. Just give us a call if you have any questions. Before we go, I want to remind you that we are accepting all donations Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We would love to see your truckloads of things arrive here at TV 44 all for a very very good cause and make sure you attend the auction September 12th. Volunteers are also requested and needed and we'd love to have you.
volunteer as well. But we're going to give one final look at our scripture verse of the day, and then we're going to say goodbye to you. It is coming to us from, um, I had a little brain spasm for a moment, and I can't even remember what our scripture passage is. There we go, Proverbs 3, 1 through 2. I'm sure Trudy has some healthy thing that I can take that will help my brain work a little bit better. <laughs> Ginkgo is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life. They will, they, they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. We certainly do want you to live life as long as possible as God has plans for you here on this earth and needs you in a healthy state so that you can do His will in this region and beyond. Don't forget, you always give us a call with prayer requests or any questions at all. 419-339-4444 is our office number. And thank you again for watching us today on Faith and Friends. Thank you, Trudy, for being with us. My extreme pleasure. It's always so much fun to be on Faith and Friends. Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness Center in Johnstown, Ohio. Have a great week, everyone.